It is a collaboration podcast. No Huddle Podcast. I'm Al Sacco. You know my partner, Brian Rennick. But we have, on this show, we are collaborating, simulcast. We got all kinds of things going on with our buddy from 49ers Rush, John Chapman. John, how you doing, man? Ah, I'm doing so well, man. I, I like you guys, which helps record together. But it's nice because nice. Al's kind of my uh, like I, I'm I'm a nice angel, you know what I'm saying? On the side <laughs> of the shoulder, and then on the other side of the shoulder is Al over there, and I love it because we got the balance. Brian, yeah, I respect everything this dude says. I don't think we're gonna ever have an issue, but uh, yeah. me and Al, maybe, maybe, and maybe this is the show where we get a little dirty, but I doubt it. We'll see how it goes, but I'm very thankful to be here with you guys. Yeah, we're, we're pumped to have you on, man. And yeah, John and I got that mutual respect that we always talk about. John is very positive, and I kind of have that negative New York energy. <laughs> if there's something, if something can go wrong, I'll find it. So we're a good balance. It's, it's going to be a good conversation. And I think a good place to start, you guys, is this Brandon Ayuk stuff. I saw something come through today, and I don't know the validity of it, but the Niners are listening to trade offers now for Ayuk through the first round of the draft or whatever it is. And I haven't seen it. At least I haven't seen it from anybody like notable, just kind of those, you know, rumor type things coming through. And the more I'm thinking about IU too, and just it's a matter of what the Niners want to do. Cause I was looking at his numbers. Now, IU had a great season last year. He finished seventh in the league in yards with 1,342 yards. He was 36th in targets with just 105, and he was 31st in catches with 75. So he made the most of his opportunities for sure. But if you're looking at, okay, if the Niners are going to invest huge money in this guy, right, you'd think a deal, I think anyway, is going to signify that if they're paying him $25 million a year, that he's going to turn more into more of a focal point, more targets and everything like that. And if not, are the Niners asking themselves, look, we're a run first team. We are going to have a lot of playmakers on this team. Is he worth 50, 60 million guaranteed? And I, you know, I don't know. It's like, I guess we won't know maybe until we see the next few weeks or, or the next month play out. What do you think, John? I, I oh, love okay, Ayuk. So, oh, here we go. Yeah, the Invader oh, okay, Niners Barrow saying, said, Barrow's on KNBR reported the 49ers are actively shot. I haven't seen that. I haven't listened to that. I haven't, that. Seen, I haven't that seen it reported anywhere. Invader Niner, thank you. Um, but uh, look, the, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch have said they're open to trading each other, and they're going to always listen, as well <laughs> they should. And yeah. so, yeah, conversations are taking place between about all players. And why would a conversation not take place about Brandon Ayuk? He's heading into the fifth year, $14.1 million, fully guaranteed. It makes sense. The conversations need to be had. And there is a deal where I would be like, yeah, you could trade Brandon Ayuk for this. Uh, you know, you look at this draft class. This has nothing to do with IU, but you look at the draft class and it's like, man, there are five elite offensive tackles that the 49ers desperately need. They have 0% chance mm -hmm. of getting any of them in their current situation. And I know a lot of people are like, well, if you trade Brandon Ayuk, let's just say you got, I don't know, 15th overall pick, which I doubt you could get. But if you could, all right, let's just play this role. Man, I'm getting one of those tackles. That would be incredible. I'm not going after a wide receiver that early. I don't think there's anybody outside of the top three. If those three guys fail, the elite three, you know, Roma Dunze, Neighbors, mm -hmm. and um, Harrison Jr., Harrison, Harrison Jr. Yeah. But I, I you got to listen to our things. I think IU's going to be here because you got to trade and pay and pay them. So if a team yeah. traded for IU, you got to go pay that dude $24 million a year. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> I think the question you have to ask is, is there a team like the 2021 Eagles who would be willing to send a first round pick, a mid first round pick to a team and then immediately sign Brandon Ayuk to an extension? And I, I think there are a couple out there. Um, I don't know that the Jaguars are one anymore, just based on the the money that they put out for Eric Armstead. You know, and I think the only reason they signed mm -hmm. Armstead is because the Tennessee Titans did what they did with uh, with. Uh, Calvin Ridley and so they had that money earmarked for Ridley and they were like well we've got this money and now all of a sudden Eric Armstead's available let's give that money to Eric Armstead so I don't think the Jaguars would be it I don't know where the Steelers are in terms of their that was cap the situation was yeah. um, and that's you know obviously that's the team that people are thinking about because Brandon Ayuk tweeted at Coach Tomlin Brandon Ayuk even liked a tweet for the first time in two years, and that tweet said the 49ers are calling and Brandon Ayuk isn't answering. Now, 
we've been through this before. We've been through this with Debo Samuel. To me, Debo Samuel is the wide receiver you look to move, and it's not Brandon Ayuk. And the reason mm -hmm. being because to me, and I've said this before, and Al, you've heard me say it, mm -hmm. Debo Samuel is a uh, what I would consider a relic in terms of he was brought in because they did not have a quarterback that they believed in, and they needed somebody who was a beast with the ball in their hands who could you know, just feast on quick slants and uh, reverses and, you know, just a, a, a training wheel for a quarterback that, that, that you don't believe in, that you don't have faith in. Uh, Brandon Ayuk is a, is a wide receiver that you pair with your young quarterback because they already have insane chemistry and you just ride that to the wheels fall off. And so to me, Ayuk is not the one, but here's the problem. Ayuk is the one that's more easily tradable because he doesn't have that contract already tied to him, the team is going to have to give it to him, but that team's going to do it on their terms. And so if if the situation is we're not going to pay Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, and so we want to move one of them, Ayuk is going to be the one that's easier to move. It's just going to be the tougher loss. Now, it's a stacked wide receiver class, not just those top three, but first, second round. I mean, you've got guys like Xavier Leggett that's probably going to go in the second round and that dude's a freak, right? That dude, that dude is probably a top 15 pick in five years ago, right? With his measurables and, and whatnot. So I, I think they could, I think they could weather it, but the, but if you trade Brandon Ayuk now, I don't, I don't know that you're, I don't know that you're now fighting for a Super Bowl berth in 2024, because I think your offense takes a pretty significant step back. And I think, too, as you're looking to get building blocks as this core gets older and they move on, Ayuk is 26 years old. He's yeah. a guy that if you sign him to a four or five year deal, you're, you're going to think you're going to get every every year of that, every penny. He's going to play till he's 30, 31 he can, at a high level still, I think. But I just feel like they have to ask themselves, it, it's going to be a lot of money. It's going to be a lot of money. You're talking yeah. probably in the 60 million guarantee. So do they think he's a top 10 receiver? And I, I went through this exercise. I want to ask you guys. I was like, yeah, he is. And then I started listing receivers and I'm like, yeah, maybe he's not. So I want to read some names off to you guys and just, right. I don't know, tell me yes, no. And, and we'll just kind of see where he is. And no, hopefully I don't miss it. Question is this right. for the 49ers only, right? So we're acting like we're the 49ers GM. Would we rather have these wide receivers in our situation? Right. Not just like well, blanket statement, or is this from a 49ers I, only perspective? I think in terms of money, like this guy makes this okay. much money. Is he better? You know, does Got he it. slide in over this guy? Got it. better. So, but just for fun, let's see. Let's see what it comes around. All right. So, CD Lamb. I think they're equivalent. <laughs> yeah, but I prefer Ayuk because he fits what we do better. CD Lamb has to operate out of the slot mm -hmm. all the time, and so I would prefer Brandon Ayuk. I think he's better, and I think he better fits what the Niners do personally. But do you no? But I mean, in terms of so, Ayuk's never had a season like CD Lamb just had. So that's because you know what I mean. Numbers, hand. <laughs> numbers wise, true. But again, when you go, so I guess my point of this: when you look at these big time wide receivers, these are dudes who mm -hmm. had 150 plus yeah. targets a year. They put up huge numbers. Is Lamb going to get more than I? Probably, right? Yeah. So that's I guess look at it that way, like contract wise. But, and and I think um, the question we have to ask before you before you start naming them off again, Al, is are the 49ers willing to pay that kind of money? if they want to continue to have the type of offense that they have, which is a run first offense. Now to me, and we, I've said this with you, right? I think moving forward, you build around Brock Purdy and, and the passing offense. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then yeah, you are willing to pay Brandon Ayuk 26 to $30 million a year because the volume is going to be there. But if that volume is not going to be there, why are you paying a guy that much money? That's the other right, question. Right, and so, right. again, it's not necessarily, is Brandon Ayuk good and should we keep him? Obviously, Brandon Ayuk is a, a stud. Mm -hmm. And ev any team that has him is going to be better. But when it comes to this team specifically, is this team willing to pay that kind of money? Now, someone might say, well, they did it for Debo. But that Debo contract was a three-year extension. Right. Like it right. wasn't, right. it's Very not, short deal. I don't, I don't even think that Debo deal is, is we should even talk about it in terms of what they have to do for Brandon Ayuk. So the question becomes, are the 49ers willing to pay that kind of money for a wide receiver? And I don't know that we know that answer. Yeah. I mean, we're going to find out. I think. All right. AJ Brown. No, AJ Brown. AJ Brown. 
agree. Okay. Uh, Justin Jefferson, it's, we don't have to talk about that. Um, St. Brown from Detroit. Ayuk. I'd say Ayuk. That one's close to me. Yeah, that one's pretty close to me. I'm a big St. Brown fan. I'm a big St. And everybody's going to realize how awesome that dude is and the receiver thing that they're doing, uh, the Netflix special. He's on there with Debo and uh, uh, Kittle. But I yeah. love St. Brown. But I'd still go Ayuk. Yeah. Yeah. I do too. I, I'm right there with you. I think I'm that um, awesome player, but I probably right now would go Ayuk. Uh, Mike Evans. I'm going Ayuk. Age, just I'm going Mike Evans is a, Yeah, that would be my yeah. age. Okay. All right. Uh, Stefan Diggs. Ayuk. Ayuk. I don't want that dude in my locker room ever. Yeah. <laughs> ever. Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill. Tyreek. I don't yeah, want that dude in my house ever, but he, he... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, here's the thing. across the street <laughs> next to one, but do you, do, I was listening to uh, the uh, athletic football show with Robert Mays and Nate Tice and they brought up uh, and they brought up. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. I was listening to uh, Extra Point Taken with Shoka Padia and Ben Solak and they brought up Tyreek Hill. And I believe it's in two years. Tyreek Hill has a cap hit of fifty one million dollars. <laughs> Fifty one million dollars. Um, talent wise, obviously, I'm taking Tyreek Hill, but Tyreek is getting up there in age too, and and on a with a receiver whose game is built on just blazing speed, that would scare me a little bit. Um, but uh, as of like this year, I would still take Tyreek for sure. Uh, Devontae Adams. That one's rough with the age. Adams is mm -hmm. still better, in my opinion. Um, I. I'd go Adam still, but you're talking one to two year window. If you're doing a four year deal and I got to give both four year deals, then I uke. I would but, rather give one to I uke. Yeah. Uh, Jamar Chase. Chase. I Chase. love that Chase. dude. Yeah. I love that dude. Cooper Cup. I uke. I uke. Yeah. But, but if you're talking about a guy that's as close to I uke's game in the NFL, I think it's Cooper Cup. You talk about, like, we always talk about Ayuk and his blocking. Cooper Cup is right there, if not better. He's got the bigger body, but, like, always open, catches almost everything, blocks like crazy. And I, I think, you know, if we look at this backwards, that previous Cooper Cup deal, the difference is Shanahan is not a passing offense. McVay, super pass heavy. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. man, I think those two players, I know their draft position and their body builds different, those things, but – Probably two of the most similar type of wide receivers with what they do in the run in the past in the NFL. I feel like with the Rams offseason, though, and what they've done, uh, you're talking about a team that might be looking to run more with, with the beef they put in the middle of their offensive line. Just yeah. trying to just trying to keep uh, Matthew Stafford alive for the next two years. They don't want Jimmy G playing. Puka. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Never once will Tyreek be invited to my home for coffee and cake. Vince is good no. people, man. There we go. <laughs> Lock your doors, Vince. That's uh -huh. right. Puka, Puka Nakua. Oh, that one's rough. You know, you've got the one year. Uh, how much? I mean, Puka's awesome. He's awesome. That's uh, rough for me. I, I keep. It's tough, I, I right? I, that one's a coin toss, man. I, I mean, Ayuk has done more in the league, so you you have a better track record with. Nakua only doing one season, so I would go Ayuk there, but that he had a hell of a season for sure. Yeah, that was awesome, man. He, he's a fun player, fun kid. Yeah. Metcalf. Ayuk. Oh, no. No, no, no. Ayuk. Ayuk all day. Okay. Yeah. So th those are the guys that I had that you would maybe – I mean, there's Michael Pittman, Amari Cooper, Garrett Wilson. I think I would probably do Ayuk over all those guys, So I, unless I forgot anybody. Wilson um, would be closer for me. Yeah, I, we haven't seen – if he gets a good quarterback, I think Garrett Wilson's gonna be phenomenal. But that I mean, is the is the vice president gonna gonna get him the ball this year? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if he can make it through a drive. <laughs> so you guys, you guys have him. You guys, based on this, Ayuk is a top ten receiver. Yes. Um, yeah. I just only think again what they could say is like, for example, I want Cooper Cup money because, like you guys said, maybe at this point, you know, my next four years are gonna be better than maybe like what you're. Coop did, Cooper Cup did way more than you did to get that deal. So that could be a thing too. Some of these guys I named that may be a little bit over the hill now or their best days are behind them. 
I am still not going to get paid that because he didn't produce like those guys in their prime, I guess. Right. So that may be a, a stalemate with the contract with the Niners and him, but we'll see like what one of you guys said it, we're going to find out <laughs> if the Niners value him and if the Niners value the run. But you, you, the time, everybody keeps thinking that IU has to be extended or traded now. And I've never really bought into that because the 49ers have so much leverage. It, they've got the fifth year option now, plus you have the franchise tag later. And if you mm -hmm. see them as a top seven, top 10, top 12 quarterback, the franchise tag applies. And so that's two years of control that Brandon Ayuk has no say. He can be pissed. He can like whatever. He can say he looks like whatever coach out there. We saw it with Debo. Those things <laughs> don't matter. The 49ers are in control. And yeah. they do this every time. Yeah, they, you shop them. And if you can get a top 15 pick and a starter, a quality starter at any position, I think that's a conversation you're willing to have. You go back to IU, you can say, look, man, we're going to trade you. We can trade you to whoever the hell we want. We can trade you anybody. And so we're going to take this trade unless you'll sign, you know, a $22 million deal and help us. That's Those are the things that happen behind the scenes we'll never hear about. But if he doesn't, and if you don't get the trade thing, it's just crickets till after the draft. And then you just kick the can down the road, say, sorry, man, we can't trade you. We won't get anything this year, and, which yeah. is what they did to Debo. I, I think the the other question is, what would they be willing to take for Brandon Ayuk? And you said a mid, you know, a, a, I would say a mid first round pick and a player. I don't know that we've seen a trade like that. Um, you know, you look at the A.J. Brown trade, right? That was first just straight third. up. Just a first and a third that season, and that was it. It was a late um, first. Uh, yeah. Why well, is in the teens? Um, oh, was it? Yeah, it was in the teens. Um, but I want to find out. Is there another? Is there another team that you know? Again, outside of the Steelers, that would be uh, willing to uh, you know fork over their first round pick. I don't know. Uh, 18th is what it was. Um, oh, you're they got the 18th pick and the 101st pick uh, for AJ Brown. Um, so is there question, a team out there let's willing ask to do this that? question. Let's say that same deal. Boom. 18th pick. I don't care about the team. I'm just saying mm -hmm. I consider AJ Brown. Brian considered AJ Brown. Al, you considered AJ Brown better than Iuke. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever that the 49ers get that call. Look, 18th and the 100, like end of the third round, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. It's like a third round comp pick almost. What do you do? Do you take that deal? Al, Brian, do you guys take that deal? First and third. Oh, look at that <laughs> deep size. I got them both. I got them both. You, you know why? Because I, I'm I'm kind of stuck in the, if they do trade him, I do think it's a gigantic step back for 2024. And then I think you're kind of losing a year of these core guys. That could be the last year with some of these core guys. So might it help them down the road, especially in this, this stacked wide receiver draft? I think they have to take one or two wide receivers anyway in this draft whether they still have Ayuk on the team or not, because you have to plan for 2025 that you may or you may not have Debo. We have to see with Juwan Jennings, what happens there. And then you really don't have anybody else anyway after those three guys. So they have to plan for the future. I just think it hurts you so much this season. I don't know. Maybe they will be, but I don't know if they're willing to do that, knowing this really could be the last year where you have Kittle and Juszczyk and Williams and all these guys together as one. So that's kind of where I am with it. It's, it's, it's such a, it's such a tough spot, man. It It's hard because, you know, I, I think as football fans, we've grown to love the draft and just that process. And um, it, it really, to me is, is a situation where it's like, I'm on a game show. Right. And I've already won a boat. <clears throat> right. And that's Brandon Ayuk, but I could also trade that boat for what's behind door number three now that could be a bigger boat it could be something even better but i don't know what it is i know right now i have a badass boat that is going to be awesome for years is it worth it to to just gamble and that's what i feel like the draft is like it is a loaded wide receiver class how many times have we seen wide receivers come into this league and just fall on their face quite a few times how many mm -hmm. times have we seen a wide receiver come into Kyle Shanahan's offense as a rookie and produce one time. And that was Debo Samuel. And you could argue that production was good, but it wasn't, it, it no. wasn't a uke level production. So to me, it's 
like I said, like Al said, you take a giant step back if you trade Brandon Ayuk. And I feel like I would rather have to worry about the cap later and have my awesome players still than make this trade with an eye towards I don't want to have to deal with the cap later. Like just I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the the bean counters do what they do, but I'm gonna keep all my badass football players for as long as I can. I like that. And I, I'll add to this just quickly. Sorry, I'm like hijacking this, but like no, dude, I understand okay. why you would do it and why you wouldn't do it. I, I think because it's such a stack class, I think the supply is higher, the demand's higher. So like I don't think you're gonna be able to get the type of deal AJ Brown got because Agreed. a team could sit there and say, Man, we'll just take, you know. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr., A.D. Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll just mm -hmm. take those guys. It's yeah. cheap, whatever. So I understand that aspect of it. And also, I don't want to take away Brock Purdy's number one target. His comfort blanket is Brandon Ayuk. And if you're going to yeah. build around the passing game, why the hell would you take that away? Why? It makes no sense to me. Unless you get a freaking awesome offer. And even if you do that, if I get that 17th pick, what was it, 18th pick, whatever, I'm not spinning on a wide receiver. I do not like the wide receivers. In that range, I'm spinning on offensive tackle, man. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to get a, a veteran wide receiver, which there's still some guys out there um, mm -hmm. that you could get. There's still some stud free OBJ. agent wide receivers. Well, uh, hold on there, Brian. Uh, I, I mean, I'm just saying for a year, for a year, <laughs> for a year. That's I, all I'm saying. Uh, I'm I saying for a year. I don't think. I just, man, that man's agent is so good. <laughs> He is. Well, we're gonna find out, guys. Not it's as, gonna be another not as good as Jerry Judy's right. agent, though. <laughs> it it is gonna be another just what what are we how far are we away from the draft? Four weeks, five weeks, whatever it is. It's just gonna be it's gonna be constant for the next four or five weeks. Like it's it's because nothing's ever dull with the 49ers. Yeah. So I'm using Mike Clay's free agent uh list that's still up there. Listen to these wide receivers that are still out there. Not saying all of them or whatever. I'm just saying I think this plays into the conversation. Because if you trade it, Iuke, you're getting a vet and you're drafting somebody. Tyler Boyd, Michael Thomas, Michael Gallup, Corey Davis, OBJ Brian, DJ Chark, uh, Chase Claypool, like Allen Robinson. There's guys out there. Mm -hmm. there. There are guys that are there. Not None of them are Ayuk, obviously. Right. But you can get a veteran presence and a rookie. Kind of see how that goes. I don't know. I don't know. To answer this question we have on the screen, does anyone think Ayuk struggles against press coverage? I do not. I think Debo, Debo does, does significantly, <laughs> Debo but does. I do not think Ayuk does. I just finished doing more Super Bowl tape because I hate my life. Oh, and I was say, that's, that's, that's <laughs> like every self -torture. single drive, Debo is getting owned mm -hmm. by one of the two press corners. Like, And yeah. I understand he was hurt, and I understand Blanketed. he played through it. Yeah. And, but, I mean, even before he got hurt, they were in that dude's grill nonstop. Like Devo got bullied, which is crazy to say, but I think that was his worst game of his entire career. I know there's stats. There might be worse statistical games, mm -hmm. but to get all those targets and to come up empty over and over and over again, no, I'm not concerned about Ayuk and press. I am concerned about Ayuk whenever Debo's out, though, because anytime Debo's gone, Ayuk shrinks. And so if he wants to be C.D. Lamb and be the guy, everybody believes that. When Debo's out, IU disappears, man. Every time. And these are conversations. If we're having these conversations, you got to better believe the 49ers have these conversations yes. before they shell out 100%. the money that it's going to cost to take it, you know, to get him. Because again, in two or three years, you're paying Purdy a shit ton of money. Nick mm -hmm. Bosa's contract explodes in 2026, you know, so they will have to make sure if they're going to commit this cap number to this receiver, he, he's got to be the guy. He's got to be a dog, right? He's got to be. Devonte Adams type dude, and you know maybe we're again we're going to find out if they think that. So yeah, because if they pay if they pay Ayuk, then the core of this team is Ayuk, Purdy, Bosa, and you could argue Fred Warner on the yeah, tail end of Warner. that contract. Yeah, but yeah, those are those are your core. Yeah, those are yeah, those are your four. That's for sure, for sure. Yeah. All right, John, you brought up a good topic that I definitely want to get to when we were talking earlier. Um, what we were going to talk about on the show. So that is, are the 49ers content with running back the same offensive line right now? Mm. Let me go over the ages of the offensive line and where they kind of stand in terms of their contracts. Trent Williams, best left tackle in the league, future Hall of Famer, but 36 years old. Freak. Probably year to year right now, depending on you know how long they're going to have. Yeah. Left guard, Aaron Banks, is in the last year of his contract. 
the Niners typically don't pay for guards. So we'll see what happens there. Jake Brendel is 32 years old. I'm pretty sure they got out of his contract after this year, too. Uh, right guard looks like Feliciano is going to, at least right now, be the starter. He's 32 years old. He's in the last year of his deal. And then McKivitz, well, I actually think that was, well, I don't want him to start at right tackle. I think it was a smart move to extend him for a year because you have a serviceable offensive lineman, whether you want to play him at guard or he's just a swing tackle or whatever. But he's a guy you got to upgrade on the offensive line. So if they run back this offensive line, one, it's old. Two, a lot of these guys may not be here. And my thought process with that is, okay, is it are we going to take a step back because of the age? And two, what is the plan after this year? You better bring some guys into the draft to develop that you have in 2025. John, where, where, where's your head at on all this? You know, most of the things, like, if you try to, you know, be in John Malkovich and jump into the head of Kyle Shanahan – like you can kind of make sense. Like, okay, I get why this happened. I get, I understand this move. I understand like even the stuff that didn't work out. Like I kind of get it whenever you're trying to look through Kyle's eyes. Then I get to the offensive line and it's just like, I can't figure it out. I can't. Mm -hmm. Not only did you not sign anybody, you didn't draft anybody last year. You didn't draft one single O lineman and you were a subpar offensive line. And so you brought them all back. All right, cool. Hey, maybe continuity will bring things to where they are. It didn't work. Didn't work again. Then you go through, you know, free agency. You brought back the same group. I love that they signed Feliciano, though, by the way. I do not want Burford ever playing again personally. But it, it, what are you going to do? Like, you've got to get somebody in here. You've got one mm -hmm. good player in Trent, and I think you have a quality starter in Feliciano. And then it's John Chapman, Brian, and Al Sacco out there doing the best they can to protect Brock Purdy. And it hasn't worked. And so you've got to change something. Now, having said that, they don't play rookies. The free agency is kind of in the rearview mirror. So even if you mm -hmm. do draft a uh, center in the first round, like Graham Barton or Jackson Powers Johnson, who's probably gone way before you get there. But even if you do, yeah. is Chris Forster going to be like, no, nah, we like Jake Brindle and the continuity. So it's well, yeah. center. I think center, no chance. There's no chance that a rookie is starting at center in a Kyle Shanahan offense because the center is responsible for all the protection calls. So what I think if there's they graduated zero from Duke, Brian. Well, I mean, obviously he's smart, <laughs> but they also have Nick Zakel who went to a, a very smart school and he still can't, mm. still can't crack the he got lineup beat out by Ben Barch. Jake. Yeah. Jake Brendel. But Kyle Shanahan has started one rookie offensive lineman uh, since he's been here, and it's because they drafted him 10th overall in Mike McGlinchey. Um, and Burford. Kind of Burford came later yeah, in the year. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're right. He did start, but did again, there was one? that rotation. Not week one. No. Uh, it wasn't week one, but it was his rookie no. year. But, I mean, they started working him in. Um, and I think they would have done that with – I think they would have worked in uh, Banks if he didn't have the injuries that he had. Um, his rookie year. But with that said, if they draft, I, I think, I think what they are, what they did by bringing everybody back is to say, look, we made it to the Super Bowl with this offensive line. We were the best offense in the NFL with this offensive line. We know that we can do what we want to do with this offensive line. So it gives us flexibility to go into the draft and say, listen, if a guy that we love on the offensive line falls to us as 31, we'll take him. But if there's not a guy there that we love, but there's a, a position somewhere else, then we'll take that. You know, and I think I think this draft is deep at tackle to where you could theoretically take a non-offensive lineman in at 31 and maybe trade up in round two to get an to, to get one of the guys in that range. So I, I think it just gives them flexibility. Do I think they want to upgrade the offensive line or feel like they need to? Sure. Uh, and if they don't, I question what they watch. That's the thing. So I have to think, I have to believe that they are not content, but they also are like, look, we know that we can compete and win with these guys. So let's get these guys back. And then if we find a way to upgrade, either via the draft or free agency, we'll do that. Well, the free agency came and the market went absolutely bonkers right like robert hunt's getting a hundred million dollars like what the, what the hell's going on right so they're like well then obviously there's there's nothing there for us because we can't play in that end of the pool 
So now we got to look to the draft. And I think that's what they're doing. And you brought up a couple good points, Brian, previously, where are they going to start building the offensive line around Purdy where you want to get more stout up the middle because he's a smaller quarterback? Are they going to do that? They should. I haven't seen, I haven't seen any. You're going to keep doing all those damn going. empty sets. Come on, you gotta man. Protect, you got to protect your franchise, you know? And John, I've said a couple of times on the show where, look, there, there are a, countless plays why you lose the Super Bowl, right? There's a number of plays why they've lost those Super Bowls. But a couple you can point to are plays where Mike Pearson gets the ball knocked down by Chris Jones. This past Super Bowl where whatever happened with Burford missing the assignments, that the randos you've had playing guard may have cost you a couple Super Bowls. Again, yeah. a ton of other plays that also cost you those games. But you can point to those plays as well where if you had somebody more stout or a little bit better up the middle, who knows? Who knows where you are right now? But it just seems like, especially at guard, they're just kind of content to like, okay, you know, just next guy, next kind of rando up. I thought he would prioritize center a little bit more because he had Alex Mack. You know, they, they went out and got Weston Richburg. So I thought that would be something. But they seem to be content with Brendel, who's just, again, he's just a dude. It's not he's horrible. Not but he's not consistent good. He's, yeah, yeah, he's not. But he's he's not a good. I he ruins so many center. drives individually. Um, he makes the right calls, though. And he's decent in pass protection, but I mean, you could count, I don't know, six to seven plays a game where he blocks nobody on a given play. Like he literally <laughs> will block nobody consistently. Um, not in pass protection. That's where the guards come in. Like you were talking about Al. And it's just like, look, if you're going to do empty sets, you got to get better guys. You have to. And the funny thing, the weird thing, again, why I don't understand Brindle is terrible at run blocking. That's not a Kyle Shanahan staple. Colton McKivitz is a subpar run blocker. Mm -hmm. uh, his, the better part of his game, believe it or not, is pass protection. And so it's just interesting to me. Uh, like, is there a change? Is it just, man, we're just gluing pieces together, Mr. Potato Head style? What's going on here? But at some point, at eventually, imagine if Trent didn't come back or isn't going to come back next year. Yeah. This is the worst offensive line in the NFL that moment like that. Mm -hmm. Right now we're like in the 20s. I think we rank 22nd in offensive line productivity. Mm -hmm. I think that's a pro football focus one. But like I, I heard that and I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty good. Like that's the point we're at. We're like, oh, a 22nd offensive line? Nice. Like I'll take that all day with what I've seen because it's just – it's so frustrating. It's like our special teams. It's just like we're just used to it being awful. And it's like we're just waiting for games to be wrecked by our special teams and our offensive line. Everything else is great. And I understand salary cap. You got to punt at some position, but not mm. four out of five freaking offensive linemen. Yeah. You can't, you can't skimp. And that's what they're doing. They're skimping and they have, and that's what they've always done. And They've lucked, to be perfectly honest, they've lucked into all of the good offensive linemen that they've had <laughs> since they came here, right? They lucked into Trent Williams, and they lucked into Lake and Tomlinson, right? They, I mean, it, great move and all, but Two that was the Lions traits. just wanting to get rid of Lake and Tomlinson, mm -hmm. so they did, and, and he turned into what he did for Kyle Shanahan. But those are the two best offensive linemen they've had here since they came McGlinchey, you could probably say is third and they drafted him, but he did not live up to the billing of a 10th overall, you know, mm -hmm. and, and now he's the Broncos expensive headache and Hey, kudos, kudos to him. Kudos to his agent, right. Um, getting paid the way that he did, but they, they, it certainly seems like they cannot or do not scout offensive line. Well at all. And that is a problem. And it's a problem when Trent Williams retires because, like you said, John, that line falls apart without him. He is an all-world left tackle, and, and he is the rising tide that lifts all boats. But if he goes down or if he retires, they are screwed, just screwed. In this well, draft, this you, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, you need a right tackle, but you also need somebody who's going to maybe play left tackle in 2025. So you mm -hmm. kind of need – Two tackles right now. Go ahead, Jeff. I was just going to say, like, the draft is pretty stout at the tackle position. But the problem is, if there's a position in the NFL that is the most void of talent for all 32 teams, it's offensive tackle. Yeah. And so you're sitting there, and yeah, Colton McKivitz could be your guy. That's fine. If you think Colton McKivitz is going to be your tackle for the next five years, awesome. 
who the hell is going to be your left tackle eventually, right? It, like, that's the issue. And you look at this, like, what's out there. I think that there are five premium offensive tackles. The issue is they're going to be gone by pick 20 because every team needs tackles. So even if you sit there at 31, what's up, Phil? Appreciate the super chat, my man. Um, he says, time to play some rookies. Who are you going to play at the offensive tackle spot if you're picking 31? Not Mims. That dude's played mm-hmm. eight starts in three years, and he got hurt at the combine. Like, that dude, if you don't like Javon Kinlaw and you were upset at that, you sure as hell do not want uh, Mims. Uh, he's off my board, personally. I would not take him at 31. Then you talk about Tyler Guyton. He's a little bit better. Oh, you. But he's probably going to be gone by the time you pick at 31 anyway. He's terrible in the run game. He's not a good run blocker. He's a great pass blocker. Uh, you get somebody like Jordan Morgan. He's more of a fit, but super low ceiling. Second round, third round. Like, what are you going to do? That's Even the problem. If you want with, to. Yeah, that's the problem with picking 31 is that while it is a deep tackle draft, once you get past like the first four, there are flaws in everyone's game, right? Yeah. And so you know, we were talking about it. Al and I were talking about it last episode and we were talking about Kingsley Suomaitai. Um, again, great pass blocker needs work in the run game, but it, that's where you go. What is your plan? Like, again, as an offense, what is your plan? Are you going to build a Brown Brock Purdy in the passing offense, or you can continue down this road of trying to be a balanced attack you know, a, a run first team. I don't know, right? They were not a run first team in Atlanta because he had a quarterback that he trusted and he had Julio Jones on the outside and they threw the ball all over the yard. I think Kyle Shanahan wants to do that. I think he does. He just hasn't had the quarterback to do it. I think he might think that he does now. So now the question becomes, do you worry about a, a tackle prospect that, needs work in the run game or do you say listen he can pass block his ass off we'll throw him in there he'll learn on the fly run blocking um but we're going to protect brock purdy because he's the future so again it's it's just a matter of what what do they want to do and and we don't we don't know that (laughs) and it'll be interesting and they'll tell us they'll tell us in the draft but we don't know that right now all right other than online john what is your biggest concern or just one of your concerns in nickel in corner position. Nickel corner. Okay. Yep. Scary as hell, man. Uh, now we got news today um, yes. that they're bringing in the safety. You know, yeah. he's going to be meeting with the Niners and I'm just sitting there just Justin like, Blackman. yeah. Now Blackman's interesting. And I've already seen people who are like, Oh, they're done with Hufunga. They don't think he's going to be back. Oh, pump the brakes there. Uh, <laughs> Hufunga is part of the long-term future of this team, but he is somebody who could play in the slot. Now, I don't think that he's a pure nickel guy, but you could do some three safety sets. The NFL seems to be transitioning with that. We're going to see a lot of that in the division with Mike McDonald joining the Seahawks. Like this multiple safety look of these hybrid guys, man, you could do that, especially in zone coverage, which the Niners do consistently. I would love that signing. But right now, that's an issue. Now, we talked about the depth at the tackle position in this draft, the depth that nickel is freaking incredible. And now this is where the 49ers just fine. Uh, you're talking about, you know, the second round in this rake straw. If he, if he drops and I think he will drop uh, Mike Sanders still out of Michigan. That's a second round prospect guy, TJ Tampa, Iowa state, Max Melton, third round guy. There are so many different Andrew Phillips. Niners met with almost all these guys. And now you're talking about a starter in the second, third round. And that's fun. That is fun. So mm-hmm. if you can figure out a way to get one of those guys, because those are plug and play, they come in sub package nickel, which is about 70% of Niners defense currently. Um, and guess who coached the nickels uh, for the past couple of years for the 40 Niners defense. It's our new defensive mm-hmm. coordinator. So maybe That's he right. prioritizes that a little bit because it's been God awful, but it got him a promotion anyway. Yeah. I, I think, <clears throat> I think again, the, the team has told us, we are looking for flexibility in the draft. So they go out in free agency and they sign Isaac Yadam and they go, look, we theoretically, he could compete on the outside and we can move Demo mm-hmm. inside because I do think Demo can thrive in the slot. He just hasn't played it a lot because they've needed him to play outside because nobody wants Ambry Thomas on the field. 
and oh, so every Thomas don't want to be on the field. Right. <laughs> that uh, that's a good point. Amy doesn't even want to be on the field. He's like, what? Why? Not. Am I? Am, are you sure? You want me to go in? Am I supposed to go in? Is that me? You call me? Is that my number? But I think what they want to do is is again be flexible to where they're just going to allow the draft to come to them, and they're going to they're going to say, look, we are we've we've got starters at every position except for free safety right now because Tayshawn Gibson is, is a free agent and uh, Hufunga is coming back. So we don't know where Jair Brown is. Right. So that's again, why Justin Black, uh, Blackman makes sense, but we've got starters at every position. So what we want to do is be able to draft our best player available. If that is a nickel corner, great. We're going to take them. If that's an outside corner, great. We're going to take them. If that's a tackle, great. We're going to take them. That's an edge. Great. We're going to take them. I really respect what they've done because that's the that's where you want to be in the draft. You don't want to be stuck drafting for needs because you're going to end up reaching for players. So I think in their mind, they're saying, look, we've got guys on the roster already that we know can play nickel. We just know that right now, and that's the De- Amador Lenore, we, we think he's better outside or he's better than any other outside corner that we have on the roster right now. So we want him playing there. But they bring in Yadam, right? And and he was one of the best press corners in the NFL last season, had a hell of a year. He's going to compete out there. And then if he wins that job, then you can move Demo inside. And now you've got a solid nickel corner. Um, and and I think that's that's kind of where they're at. And so really, to me, it's just depth at the, at the defensive back position, including corner, I would say secondary, complete secondary, right? We need some more depth there. Um, I think the biggest hole right now is safety because we don't know about Hufunga and we don't really know a whole lot about Jair Brown. He played a little bit, and he played pretty well in, in stretches, uh, but he also played like a rookie. So he's coming in in the second year. So to me, it's safety, but in, in general, it's just secondary depth. And then obviously, I'm just a little a little scared about uh, the linebacker opposite Fred Warner. Um, they brought in Devondre Campbell. Uh, while Who hasn't been Green, good the past two years, hasn't been good the past year, two years, but in 2021 was an all pro. So mm-hmm. he has that in him. Right. But he's two years older now, almost three years older now. So um, that scares me a little bit just because we don't know, you know, what they're going to get out of that, you know, right. Group of players, which is Devondre Campbell, Jalen Graham and D winters. And then we also don't know what you're going to get out of Greenlaw post Achilles tear. Um, I think he'll be ready for the start of the season, but I don't think he's a return to play is not a return to performance. And that's the thing that, that worries me a little bit. I'm still on that line, Brian. I'm not even asking. (laughs) Take it. It's yours. (laughs) Yeah. You know, guys, I think everybody wants them to take a tackle in the first round and that's their biggest need. But when you look at this roster and how many short-term fixes they have and how many question marks they're going to have after the season, whether it's age or just, again, a guy who's on a one- or two-year deal, I'm not sure there are many positions that are off the table. I think they can go a lot yeah. of different places. And I do think, Brian, your point is a good one, where because of these one- or two, two-year deals, they have starters everywhere, right? So they can say, all right, we're good for this year. This is the best player. We're going to take this player because in two years, he's, he's going to fit in somewhere. And then they can take it from there. And then next year, if they have to do more band-aid stuff, they will. But I feel like like that's got to be their approach in the draft because the 49ers are not going to be the 49ers as you know them in 2025. Mm-hmm. 2024, sure. going to be a lot of the same faces, but 2025 is going to be different. They have to start planning for that now. And you don't not take a guy who you think is going to be a stud at receiver or defensive tackle or wherever because you really need an offensive tackle where you can't draft for need. You do have to get tackles at some point. But I think, yeah, I, I think it's BPA, man. I, I really do think that's going to be the approach. Now, do you think in the first round, again, the 49ers have never drafted in the first round and not taken an O-lineman, D-lineman, wide receiver, or quarterback. They've never drafted a second-round corner. Like, do you see somebody like Kool-Aid Ministry, who I think is going to be a best player available if he's there at 31? Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. a damn good player. Could you see the Niners actually drafting a corner in the first round? Never I even do. taking a second-rounder. I do. Yeah. I, a, a guy like Kool-Aid McKinstry for sure. I would love um, him. And the only reason he would drop is because of uh, j- just some injury concerns, which I mean, I, I guess that's why they drop. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I would. I, I, I don't think they would be scared to do it. Um, but again, it's just a matter of is there an edge that they value more? Which, by the way, I learned something today that I thought was incredible on Twitter. Uh, Chop Robinson from Penn State. 
Um, the reason his name is his nickname is Chop is because when he was a when he was born, he was 14 pounds when he was born. And so they called him Pork Chop. And then he got taller and leaner and he dropped the pork and just stayed with Chop. That's where we got Chop Robinson. But again, if they feel like an edge is you know, they, they have an edge rated higher than, than a corner, even if it's like a Kool-Aid McKinstry, then, then they'll go with it. But I don't think they're afraid to draft. It's just a matter of where they, you know, where they value uh, the position. So do I think they will? Probably not, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. And what's the long term? Are they going to extend Lenore? Are they going to extend more? I think so. Because you got Hufunga, Lenore, and Ward all in their last year. Of the contract, I, th- right? I think they should have extended oh. War, uh, Mooney Ward already to lower his cap hit this year um, and tack another two or three years onto his deal. I think that would have been a smart move, and, and they may still do that. Um, but I thought they could have done that prior to free agency, again, just to, just to free up some space. But if they draft a first-round corner, you know – this is Mooney Ward's last year. Yeah, they're not. They're, yeah, they're not mm-hmm. extending Mooney Ward if they draft a first round corner for sure. Yeah, dude, such a crossroads. Such a crossroads. I mean, it's fun as hell to see where they're going to go with it, but just a lot of questions, a lot of different ways that they can go. So, and this is what happens Crazy. when you have a freaking badass roster. You can't yeah. pay everybody, and they mm-hmm. got they got Mooney Ward on the cheap. Like he outplayed his contract considerably. And so that, oh, yeah, you got Green Law on cheap. You got like you got guys on the cheap, but eventually, if they all play up above, they got to go elsewhere. I go get paid, you know. You and get expensive more power to old. Yeah. yeah I, I will so. never, I will never, uh, I will never be mad at a player going to get a bag, even if it's not with my team. Never. All right, you guys. John, we appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming on and doing this with us it was pretty it was fun always love having you on you're always welcome anytime you want to come on our show and got guys, Al approval that is oh nice. dude you're the, you're the best man you're the best <laughs> subscribe to 49ers rush podcast youtube subscribe to our youtube station as well it's kind of new but we you know we've been doing this for a couple weeks now and our podcast wherever you get your podcasts for brian and john i'm al thanks everybody later